Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 1.4, complex numbers. Sets of numbers and definitions. Uh, disclosure, I will try to find a better place to record with better lighting. Uh, the morning that I'm recording these due to time constraints, uh, this is the room I have available to me. But after this series of videos over complex numbers, you can expect a better lighting scenario. All right, so to begin our discussion and our venture into college algebra, we're gonna jump into the middle of the first chapter in the textbook that we're currently using. And we're gonna discuss complex numbers. Uh, the reason we're discussing complex numbers first is because they will allow us to completely analyze quadratic equations, which is what the next section is about and complex numbers will be a recurring theme throughout not only this course, but subsequent math courses that you may teach, excuse me, that you may take, and you may teach, depending upon how your path takes you. So let's start with sets of numbers that we're going to be using throughout this course. Um, I debated whether or not to go through the history of the development of these sets of numbers as to what prompted the move from one set of numbers to a larger set of numbers, but I've decided to just enumerate the, the sets of numbers that you should already be somewhat familiar with. So the first set of numbers you need to be familiar with are the counting numbers. The counting numbers are also known as the natural numbers. But I will usually call them the counting numbers because they're the numbers that you count with when you first learn to start counting. Now typically when we represent a set, a collection of objects, we'll represent it inside a set of braces. There are exceptions as we'll discover later. But if I wanted to list the counting numbers, I would just start counting. One, two, three, and I'm assuming everybody knows that these three dots, which are called ellipses, means that this pattern continues until I tell it to stop, or it continues forever if I don't tell it to stop. I'm not going to stop it, but I do need to close off my set with a closed brace. So those are the first set of numbers, counting numbers, the numbers that you count with. And you may, be, you may notice that there are some numbers that are missing. For example, zero is not there. So the next set of numbers is called the um, whole numbers. The whole numbers are just the union of the counting numbers along with the set containing zero. In other words, the whole numbers just start at zero. Two, three. And you'd be surprised from a historical perspective, the debate there was about the need for a digit representing the absence of quantity. But for us, it's pretty important because if I gave you a grade on a test and it was that, and you started panicking, and I said, I'm sorry, I left off a zero, but it's just a zero, so what's the big deal? Yeah, I think you can appreciate the value of a digit that represents the absence of quantity. So what types of numbers are missing from the whole numbers? Well, there's a lot of them missing, but one type of number that's missing are the negative numbers. And if you notice, as we move from one set of numbers to the next, we are taking the previous set of numbers and adding more to it. So if we add the negative numbers, so I'll need to start this set with some ellipses, and we'll pick it up with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. When you include the negative numbers with the whole numbers, I should say the negative whole numbers with the positive whole numbers, you get the set of numbers that's called the integers. So integers are just your positive and negative whole numbers, but we're still missing some values. Most of you know that there are many numbers between consecutive integers. Uh, for example, between 0 and 1, there are no more integers, but there are plenty of fractions and decimals, which brings us to our next set of numbers called the rational numbers. Now, the rational numbers, they're not impossible to list, but there's a property of rational numbers that makes them difficult to list. For example, think of a number between 0 and 1 you're probably thinking one half, unless you're trying to get cute and come up with something else. Okay, so one half is between zero and one. 
I cannot fit another number, another fraction between one half and one, or between zero and one half. Sure, between zero and one half, I can put one fourth. Well, can I put another one between one fourth and one half? The answer will always be yes. There's a property of rational numbers called density, which basically means this. If you take any two fractions, there will always be one in between them, no matter how close they are. So you can always fit an infinite number of fractions between any two given numbers. So it's kind of hard to list them in a row. It's not impossible, but it's hard. You can't list them in a row like you can list these numbers in a row in the sense that these numbers are increasing as we go from left to right. You can't, I believe, you cannot list the rational numbers, the fractions, in order from left to right increasing. There is a way to list them in an order, but just not in increasing order. 99% sure that's true. My spidey senses are tingling. But I digress. So the rational numbers are basically every possible fraction that we can create. In fact, the word rational, the root word, is ratio. So rational numbers are the ratios of integers. This is where a lot of people stop liking math. Oh no, fractions. I'll tell you right now, at this point, if you're watching these videos and you're taking a college algebra class, and you're scared of fractions, you need to stop being scared of them. They follow predictable rules, and you know these rules. You just need to practice them and refamiliarize yourself with them. Throughout this, this course of video series, I will be reminding you how to conduct arithmetic with fractions and promise you that it's not nearly as bad as you might think. But let's get back to uh, describing the rational numbers. And I say describe because I'm not going to list them. To describe a set, as opposed to listing its elements. You can describe a generic element and then say what has to be true about that. For example, a generic rational number is just a fraction, so we'll say A over B. Now, when you're writing a set in what's called set builder notation, you write a generic element in the set. It's usually followed by a vertical line. In some textbooks, it's a colon. But this vertical line translates to the phrase such that. And then you have to describe what the pieces are over here. For example, we could say A and B are integers. And as you probably know, the denominator of a fraction can't be zero. Can't be zero. So the rational numbers are defined to be the ratio of all integers, or all ratios of integers, provided that the denominator is not equal to zero. Now keep in mind that we are building larger sets so when we go from the integers to the rational numbers, we are adding on to what we already have. In other words, these integers are included in this list of fractions. Why? Because every integer can be written as a ratio of integers by simply putting it over one. For example, I can justify that negative three belongs to the rational numbers because I can write it as negative three over one. It fits the form of a rational number, therefore it belongs to the rational numbers. Now, once we've done all the fractions, you might think that's it. We've got them all, except we haven't. And the reason we haven't is because of a, of a property of rational numbers when viewed as decimals. Now, you know some fractions as decimals. For example, you should know that 1 half is 0 0.5. Nobody should debate that. You probably know that 1 third is 0 0.3 repeating. But the truth is, if you take any rational number any ratio of two integers and divide it out using long division, its decimal will always do one of two things. Number one, it will terminate. It will get to a point where it's over, such as 0 0.5, end, or at some point it will start repeating. Now some rational numbers like one third begin repeating immediately. There are other rational numbers. I don't know what rational number would equal to the following decimal off the top of my head, but I know how to find it. If we said something like 13.153 and then do a 7.5 repeating, there is a fraction, a ratio of whole numbers, excuse me, a ratio of integers that would equal this repeating decimal. But as decimals, rational numbers will always do one of two things. They will always terminate or they will always end. So that's another way to describe the rational numbers. You could say that it's the set of decimals that terminate or repeat. 
not quite the proper way to use set builder notation here, but at least it conveys the idea that rational numbers can be viewed as fractions, ratios of integers, or as decimals that either terminate or repeat, which kind of raises the question, are there decimals that neither terminate nor repeat? And the answer is yes. No one of them. Pi. A lot of people think pi is 22 over 7. No, it's approximately 22 over 7. A lot of people would say pi is 3.14. It's not. It's approximately 3.14. But as a decimal, pi never terminates, so it goes on forever. And it also never repeats. This has been proven. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this course to prove that the decimal representation of pi neither ends nor repeats, but I promise you it is a well-established and accepted fact, which raises a problem. Pi doesn't belong to the rational numbers. Now, pi is not the only decimal that does this, the square root of two. If you put it in a calculator, it will round it off to so many decimal places, but the square root of two is another number whose decimal never terminates or repeats. In fact, and I'm not gonna prove it, there are way more decimals that neither end nor repeat than repeat or terminate. Proving that, again, is beyond the scope of this course, but if you take my word for it, and you should, there are a lot of decimals missing from here. So is that the next set of numbers? Well, sort of, because in our progression of number sets, sets of numbers, we are adding to the numbers that we already have. So what would the next set of numbers be? They would be called the real numbers. And it's tricky to define the real numbers. In fact, you usually don't define the real numbers rigorously until you're junior or senior level as a math major. But we can kind of describe what the real numbers are by just looking at the description of rational numbers from the perspective of decimals. Rational numbers are decimals that terminate or repeat. What's missing are the decimals that neither terminate nor repeat. So if we put them all together, we could say that the real numbers are all possible decimals. But let's be a little bit more specific in terms of rational numbers. We could also describe the real numbers as the rational numbers decimals that either terminate or repeat joined with, we could say the word union, but we haven't formally introduced it yet, so we'll say joined with, the irrational numbers. And we haven't defined irrational numbers, but for our purposes, they're the decimals that neither terminate nor repeat. And is this the end of the set of numbers? Well, not really. Well, it was for the longest time until, I want to say about 400 years ago, I would have to go back and look again, but there are some problems that can't be solved if these are the only numbers that you know. For example, x squared equals negative 1. You can choose any number in any of these sets and it won't make it true. Because most of you know that when you square a number, it will come out positive. Because positive times positive is positive, and negative times negative is also positive. There's only one exception, 0. 0 squared is 0. That's not positive, but it's not negative either. So you can grab any number up here, the real numbers is the biggest set, and it won't make this equation true. And for the longest time, it was just brushed to the side and said, we're done with math, we can't create any more numbers. And finally, somebody, uh, and my apologies, I should have reviewed this or studied this before I made this video, somebody finally said, fine, we're gonna sit down and give this an answer and see what happens. Oh, well, what happened? Well, I'll show you in the next video.